Hi, Kathy. Hey. Hello. Well, there he was, Kath. Jesus. Hanging on the cross. Hey, isn't it nearly Christmas? Why do we have Jesus hanging on the cross? That's so Easter. Shouldn't we be getting into mangers and stars and such at this time of year? Haven't you ever heard of Christ the King Sunday? Well, sure, I've heard of it, but... Well, okay, all right. Christ the King Sunday. It's a Sunday uh, just uh, before Advent starts. It, it happens to be uh, the last Sunday of our, of our church year. And, and so it's going to mark the change from one year, from one church year to, to the next. And after today, uh, we're going to move into the season of Advent, where we're going to prepare for the birth of Christ. So that tells me when it is, but it doesn't tell me what Christ the King Sunday is. What does it mean? Obviously, it must have something to do with the cross, right? Of course it does. Obviously. I don't want to imply that you might not know what Christ the King Sunday is, but... Hello there, I'm here. And, and you are who? The leader, of course. That's pretty self-evident. She's got someone following her. What's going on? Why is that guy following you? <laughs> you want to turn it on? Well, that's fair enough. I mean, leader, where, where, where are you leading this, this, this guy? Um, around, I guess. Just around. That's probably okay, right? They won't be much of a bother. Well, I, I suppose not, but, you know, they're interrupting my explanation of Christ the King Sunday. Can you keep it kind of quiet? We're having a little discussion here. Right. Here we go. Come along, follower. Follow me. <laughs> yep. There they go. Around the pews. Nice and steady. Following one right after the other. Leading. Following. Say, Christ the King of Sunday is about leading and following. Leading and following. It doesn't seem like Jesus could do much of either up there on the cross like that. Well, Kath, you, you got to think about the cross here as a, as a symbol. Wait, hold that thought. The cross is a symbol, sure. But what's going on here now? Um, well, it looks like a, a really thirsty uh, woman standing here in, in the front of our church. <laughs> well, she does look thirsty. Wait, is this another symbol? Could she represent, oh, I don't know, thirsty people around the world? Or, or, or people who don't have ready access to, to potable water. Right, thirsty people. Leader, you're, you're back. Yep, just passing by. Hey, follower, what are you doing? Giving that guy a drink of water? That's not what I did. That's not what following me. Wow, that's a very small amount of water. That's hardly worth stepping out of line for a follower. I just did the best I could. Ah, I'm starting to see what's going on here. <laughs> really? I'm completely lost. Totally. Leader, follower, thirsty people, the crossed, Christ the King Sunday. And as long as I'm ranting, what about that good gifts fair out there in the narthex? Hold on, hold on. I can, I can explain it all. I better start with the cross. That, that's where we began this thing. Yes, the gospel lesson that has Jesus hanging on the cross with the thieves. Remember, I said it seemed less like Christmas, which is just around the corner, and more like Easter, which is eons away. Ah, but Easter, Kathy, Easter is always here. What? Yeah, the cross. The resurrection. That's, that's why we're here. That's why we're here this Sunday morning. And on Christ the King Sunday, that's what we think about. Christ dying for us. Giving himself for us and for others. The ultimate sacrifice. At some point here this morning, you said something about the cross as a symbol. 
What did you mean? It's not just a symbol of Jesus' death and resurrection, is it? I mean, there's more, right? It can't just be pointing to dying. I know that the Gospel lesson talked about being with God in paradise, but I don't want to think about dying, not now, not just before Christmas. No, no, okay. Christ the King Sunday isn't about dying. It's about looking forward. Sure, the cross reminds us of Christ's sacrifice uh, for us, but its meaning is much more uh, complex than that. Jesus on the cross that day didn't just give the ultimate sacrifice. Kathy, he became, he became our ultimate leader. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the leader aspect of all this. Sorry, leader. Go on. <clears throat> So the cross is a symbol of eternal life, but, but we still have a whole life to live here on this planet. And Jesus, throughout his life, provided us tons and tons of examples of, of how to live in this life here and now. Oh yeah, Jesus really mixed it up with the poor and downtrodden, the outcasts. The Bible is full of stories like that. Exactly, exactly. And that, that, that brings us to uh, this little scene uh, right here. You mean the leader, the thirsty person, and the not-so-great follower, right? Yeah, but, but Kathy, I, I think the follower here is the best kind of follower. What? He didn't do what his leader did. That's just a basic rule of followers. Do what the leader does. He did do what <laughs> the leader did. It was just he did it to the voice of a a different leader. Okay, I see. You're referring to Jesus. Sorry, leader. I think you just got bumped from your job. But really, what this guy, this follower, did for the thirsty person was nothing compared to what Jesus did for people. Think of the blind man who could see, the leper who was healed. That's transformative stuff. A little sip of water is not a miracle cure. But do you remember... Do you remember what this follower said after he gave to the thirsty person that drink of water? No. What did you say, follower? I said I did the best that I could. So what does that mean, he did what he could? Still, it still doesn't compare to the amazing things Jesus Christ the King did. Well, let's get back to the cross. Remember, it's a symbol. Sure, it points to paradise with God, but it's embedded, Kathy, in, in, in the earth. It was placed in the earth, the here and now earth, planted firmly there. Jesus was a leader who gave us example after example, showing us how to live in the here and now. His actions said, get out there. Get out there and deal with the poor the outcasts, the unfortunate ones, do something while you're here on this earth. So by something, Jesus meant anything? Even just the little bit that this follower did? Exactly. Exactly. We can't all be miracle workers. I mean, we can't all donate huge sums of, of money and or use every bit of the time we have. We, we can't all do that. But we can, all of us, do something. The cross, then, is a symbol that points us to a great and glorious here and now. It's what we can do here while we're alive. That's how we follow Jesus? Yes. That's the miraculous transformation that you were worried about, that you were wondering about. It's what happens when we remember that, that Jesus, and not just his words, but his actions, we remember that Jesus is our leader. We're all transformed by, by service to others. Have we covered everything now? The cross, check a symbol of the great and glorious here and now, the leader, check, it's Jesus and his examples, the follower, 
check. That is us doing what we can. Okay, we're missing something. It sounds like we've covered everything. What, what's missing? The timing of this Christ the King Sunday. Why now? Well, Advent is, is right around the corner. It, it starts next, uh, next Sunday. And, and you know what Advent is, right? Of course, it's the lead up to Christmas. <laughs> yes, but it's more. <laughs> We're looking forward to the birth of Jesus. God coming to us. Showing us how he intended it all to be. Christ the King Sunday right now. It's talking about Jesus as the ultimate leader. It all helps us focus on what's important about Christmas. And that is? It's serving, Kathy. It's about giving. Serving just as Jesus did. And suddenly, the Good Gifts Fair makes perfect sense. We can serve others, even if we can just do a tiny bit. We can create transformation in this world, the here and now glorious world God gave us. We can buy one chicken or a whole herd of cows. It doesn't matter. What matters is doing what we can. Well, now that sums it up very nicely. So, thank you. Hold on. I have one more question. Okay, what now? What about this leader here? It's obvious that the follower was more like Jesus, doing what he could. What does this leader symbolize? Hmm, I, um... Oh, I know. She could symbolize the everyday person. You know, how we tend to be most of the time. Just out, moving through our days, not paying attention to the things we could be doing to affect transformation. She is us. That doesn't make me sound very good. <laughs> well, leader, let me leave you with an inspirational quotation. I think it was from John Quincy Adams who said... If your actions inspire others to dream more, to learn more, to do more, uh, and become more, you are then a leader. There you go. Something to strive for, leader. And all of us, too. Yeah, do. Do what you can. Maybe a prayer would be appropriate here. Dear God, as we move through uh, our days... Help us as we try to do what we can to, to transform this world here and now, to make a difference. Lord, we look at, at you as our inspiration and our leader, but we know that, that we too should lead with our actions. Help us to remember that what we can do, even if it's very little, should always be done. Thank you for the gift of our ultimate leader, Christ the King. Be with us as we look forward to the celebration of his birth, your gift to us.